we all understand that there are three main technological pillars that we need to that we need to tackle, we need to solve if we would like to have autonomous driving. So the first one is, is sensing. When people think about sensing, they think about this level, object detection. This is driving assist. This is where driving assist is today. High precision mapping. We heard uh, today from Edzard about high precision mapping. Th this is a necessary and critical condition. So the first approach is you use a 3D sensor, like a laser scanner, and you detect vehicles and pedestrians, and they are described as the 3D coordinate system of the car. And then what you do, you localize the car in an HD map. So now all what you need to do, you take the vehicles, the, road, the vehicles and pedestrians you detected in step one, and put them on the high definition map. Every sensor that you add, you need to lift it to 3D. The problem is that 2D to 3D is hard. Our approach is you use the camera to detect both the vehicles and pedestrians and the drivable path. You localize the car in the HD map. You use this localization into HD map by projecting the HD map onto the image space. We're not projecting the image space to 3D, but doing the opposite. Now, when you, when you are looking at, at adding additional sensors like radars and laser scanners, all what you need to do, you need to do 3D to 2D. And 3D to 2D is easy. So the right-hand side is difficult to implement. But in the long run, this is the right approach. And then the third uh, technological pillar uh, this is where a lot of artificial intelligence is hiding, is the decisions. The driving uh, decisions, we call the uh, driving uh, uh, policy. What we see here, that the kind of squeezing in that that uh, uh, driving does. So this car, for example, that is now in the circle, would not succeed in merging. And we're fast forwarding it, and still the car is not succeeding. <laughs> if you are thinking that there is, there is an autonomous car out there, that can do something like this, then you are completely fantasizing. <laughs> it's not even close, not even close, OK? So what you see there on, on the left-hand side is a double merge. So here's the first thing. These two cars, a deadlock, OK? Well, we, we don't have audio, so we don't know what happened there between these two guys, right? <laughs> and this is what's going on with sensing. So with sensing, you are sensing the present. And the technology behind sensing the present is what you heard before. But when you're thinking about driving policy, you're planning for the future. Planning for the future is a different machine learning technology, which is called reinforcement learning, in which you are interacting with the environment. In supervised learning, the actions or our predictions do not affect the environment. They have no effect on the, the environment. Therefore, we can collect all the data in advance. We can collect all the data offline. We found a way to... Uh, to somehow solve this problem. In the classical case, you are opening a tree of all possibilities, and, and it explodes exponentially. When you're using machine learning, it's like playing the AlphaGo, this, the, the Google game oh, that, they, that they won the game of Go. You're opening a, a, a tree, and you have a clever way of traversing this tree using data-driven uh, methods. And let, let me show you here some simulations. Again, you have the, the red cars need to go right, and the white cars need to go uh, left. In each trial, these eight cars are placed randomly on the, on the stretch. So if we have a, our IQ chip that is handling sensing, this kind of algorithm takes only 1% of it. And autonomous driving would not lift off the ground if there is not a true economical value to it. If the cost is too high, we'll not see autonomous vehicles. If we don't build a business, we don't we will not have autonomous driving. So if I'm summarizing, first, if you want to do sensing right, there is this element of strong perception, of understanding the drivable paths. Second, mapping done right, you use a strong perception to automate the high-definition map building and using crowdsourcing. Third, the driving policy done right, you need to reach human-level negotiation. And this is really an element, if we don't solve it right, we will not see autonomous cars. So to do autonomous cars, we need also to solve this part, the driving policy. It's not only the sensing and the mapping, it is negotiating into traffic. And there, there's a lot of artificial intelligence.